Uh, my name is Taro Yamamoto, and I've been involved in the development of Japanese phones uh, in, at Adobe uh, for, for more than 25 years. And I, I have to, uh, I need to uh, confess that uh, I had a serious jet lag uh, when I came to Montreal at this time. But this experience uh, makes me recognize that uh, when the sun rises at one place, the sun sets at another place simultaneously. I suspect that this might be what Mr. Cyrus Highsmith wanted to imply in his speech he made the day before yesterday. The, the East and the West is a, a coexisting always and simultaneously, however different they look to be. I think I need to add uh, one point uh, related to Mr. Highsmith's uh, presentation. What he described as subordinate Latin characters that are seriously uh, distorted and ugly was an outcome of a technical limitation of the mechanism of Japanese manual prototype setting machines, which became widely used after the World War II. The machine did not allow any part of a character to extend beyond the boundary of the, the square uh, M uh, type body. Although uh, some solutions were implemented later, many Japanese prototype setting phones, including those subordinated, subordinate le uh, Latin grips produced in the 1960s and 70s, uh, could not be free from the limitation. And those phones continued to be used for compatibility reasons uh, until uh, recently. In this presentation, I would like to discuss whether harmony is possible between East Asian and Latin, uh, Latin glyphs. I hope this could give you some hints uh, to think about the internationalization of typefaces, not limited to the scope of East Asian uh, typography. I took this picture uh, in San Francisco, downtown San Francisco. If one needs to use only one script, the world would be easier. As far as we look at this kind of simple symbols, we can say that uh, this world might be simpler than we usually expect. In Taipei, in Taiwan, I took this photo. It might be the same thing might be true. The same thing might ap apply. Only uh, a Chinese characters are used. In Tokyo, this is a signboard of a Japanese sake brewing company with good sake, this world might look much simpler than it really is. <laughs> if the world looks more complicated while you are drinking, you might be too pessimistic. <laughs> However, editors and printers have needed to use both East Asian and Latin glyphs since the late 19th century. This is a textbook of the Japanese language published by the American Presbyterian Mission Press in Shanghai in 1863. 
you can see that Japanese katakana uh, syllabic characters are printed with Latin characters. The American mission press needed to compose both Japanese and Latin glyphs in this book. The same American Presbyterian Mission Press in Shanghai printed this book in 1878. As you can see, in order to compose this text, both Chinese ideographic and Latin glyphs were needed. Also, I guess, a systematic typecasting process w was necessary to produce consistently sized type bodies for the two scripts. Or you, uh, they could not um, make a form of type. Well, this example page was taken from an article that I wrote uh, two years ago. In East Asian typography today, both East Asian and Western glyphs are mixed and used in most publications and printed matters. The Japanese text needs not only Japanese syllabic and ideographic glyphs, but also Latin glyphs. This is the reality of today. Without Latin glyphs, we cannot, uh, we cannot live. We cannot survive. So let's begin with a rudimentary fact about Japanese typography. A Japanese font is a melting pot of glyphs from different scripts. A font needs to contain more than 6,500 uh, ideographic glyphs, about 200 Japanese hiragana and katakana syllabic glyphs, and Arabic digits, and Latin upper and lowercase glyphs, and with many, many punctuation marks and sim various symbols. Yeah, you can see that uh, uh, we need a, a Chinese origin, uh, originated that, uh, ideographs, and that's more than 6,500 uh, ideographs are necessary but we need uh, syllabic, Japanese uh, specific syllabic scripts are also necessary, and the punctuations are necessary, and the Arabic digits are necessary, and yes, we need Latin glyphs. To see if, to see if harmony is possible between East Asian and Western glyphs, we should first compare the shapes of Japanese and Latin glyphs. However, you will uh, easily see that there are no common stroke or structural elements between the two scripts. Nothing is common between the two. However, it's not sensible to have Latin glyphs imitate Japanese glyphs on the, on the pretext of harmonization. As this very bad agri example shows, it is impossible to simply mix Japanese and Latin glyphs. All Latin glyphs will be alienated from their own Latin tradition how lamentable it will be. The Latin alphabet also has a long history. It is said that the alphabet originated in Italy more than 2,500 years ago. As you know well, 
The development of Western typography also added more to the wealth of the Latin alphabet. And it added also to the, more to the, to the aesthetic and the stylistic variety of the Latin alphabet. I think it is necessary to, for any glyph shapes belonging to a script to retain its essence of the script. Even if the glyphs are used with different glyphs belonging to another script. So what is the essence of a script? Mm, it's a difficult question, but as far as I guess, it should be the, the stylistic consistency, continuation, or in other words, our memories of the script and its grip shapes. Oh, so, but uh, does this mean that the harmony between Japanese and Latin designs isn't possible? Yes, it's possible, but the two conditions need to be satisfied, I think. First, conceptual elements of the two scripts must be in harmony. Second, optical properties of the two scripts should be in harmony. I need to uh, uh, discuss it, this more. This is an example of a conceptual mismatch. Kozuka Mincho, uh, it is a, a, Adobe, a, an, an Adobe's typeface, and Kozuka Mincho is a very modern, modern uh, Mincho typeface. But the style of Adobe Garamond is based on the traditional old style Roman. I think this, this mismatch, mismatch is too layered. On the, on the lower, level of, lower, lower level conceptual layer, the concept in Japanese typeface design doesn't have a counterpart in Western type of typeface design at all, and vice versa. There's no notion of modern Mincho typeface in Western typeface design. And there's no notion of old style Roman in East Asian typeface design. Also, on the upper level conceptual layer, even if the generic concept of modern applies to the Japanese typeface, yes, Kozuka Minjo is a modern typeface, and that of old style to the Latin typeface, yes, Adobe Garamond is an old style Roman. The two concepts are opposite in meaning. It's possible to say that Kozuka Mincho is modern, or it's possible to say that Adobe Garamond is an old style Roman, but it, it's impossible to say that the notions of modern and old style are in harmony with each other at all. It is very simple and very clear. I took this photo in New York and the other photo in Kyoto, Japan. I believe no one denies that it is, it is difficult to harmonize modernist buildings in New York with the building of a traditional Japanese temple in Kyoto. So what can be a successfully harmonized example? I'd like to pick this example. In this example, a Japanese Mincho typeface designed in a centrist style is combined with a transitional style Roman typeface. By the word centrist, I mean that the style is not too traditional, but not too modern. In other words, it is a middle way approach. 
I, I guess you, it, it, the, the difference uh, may be subtle, but uh, uh, if you compare this, the, the upper line, uh, Kozuka Mincho typeface has a, a very large uh, counter spaces. And we call it a, a modern type, uh, Mincho style typeface. And in this style, transitional style, or, or, or centrist style, a Mincho style, at a counter space is a, um, a slightly at a, a compressed. I think many people can agree that the concept of centrist is not very different from uh, that of transitional, though the word transitional might slightly uh, signify not only a, a stylistic uh, tendency, but also temporal uh, changes. But anyway, if association and analogy are possible between the two concepts, I think we can say that the two scripts can be harmonized well on the conceptual level. Pierre Simon Fournier's type is one of the most well known typefaces in the transitional style in Western typography. This, bit, this picture was taken from the Manuel Typographique printed in the mid 18th century. Finally, we can work on the task of satisfying the second condition, namely to have general, uh, no, generic op optical properties of the two scripts harmonized. All the adjustments should be made to grip shapes of the secondary script. <coughs> Why? How can we decide which is the primary script and which is the, the secondary script? Practically speaking, if Japanese scripts are the majority in a text, the primary script is thought to be Japanese. A Japanese font meant to be used for Japanese text usually contains Latin uh, glyphs, but those Latin glyphs are thought to be used for the secondary or non-primary script. So the adjustment uh, we are going to do is made to, should be made to those Latin glyphs included in a Japanese font for the purpose of harmonization. Let's begin the adjustment. Most Latin typefaces tend to be smaller than Japanese typefaces, as shown in this example. This sample is set in uh, source serif regular, regular for the English words and source hand serif regular for the Japanese words. An East Asian ideograph occupies about 90% uh, to 90% uh, to 95% of the M square body, while the Latin cap height is much shorter than the height of the M body. I think you can see that uh, in, in this sample, a, a Latin glyphs uh, look smaller than Japanese characters by simply uh, a, a combine, combining the two typefaces. Look at this example. The Latin glyphs have been scaled, enlarged by 9% in this example. Yeah. Oh. No, 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 no. Wait. Wait. 
So 9% and smaller, yeah. This is smaller. This is a usually, uh, if you mix a two, the, uh, uh, an arbitrary two uh, arbitrary typefaces, uh, Japanese and Latin, and uh, this uh, often uh, uh, Latin glyphs uh, uh, look smaller. And in this example, I uh, uh, scaled it by uh, 9%. Still, we can see that most Latin typefaces tend to be heavier than Mincho or Song style typefaces used for the for long body text. So by reducing the stroke weight we could prevent Latin grips from being too heavy. Yeah, you can see the, oh, oh sorry. You can see the difference. Is this combination harmonized well? Yes, I think so. The, the harmonization works to a good degree. However, one cannot be too careful when reducing the weight of uh, Latin glyphs. Reducing the weight of Latin glyphs can more or less damage the stately presence ex expected for traditional Latin letter forms. By reducing uh, Latin glyphs weight, uh, a Latin glyphs cannot be Latin glyphs anymore. It is possible. So we should be uh, uh, very careful in reducing the weight of Latin glyphs. But I think uh, this example is not bad, uh, that harmonized example of uh, Japanese and Latin glyphs. After after having reached this point, I'd like to discuss another issue. Uh, a Japanese font includes half width and full width grips for Latin and uh, digits, whose shapes must be more or less distorted and ugly. Before, by making every type, every type half width or full width, Manual type typesetting could be efficient in the age of hot metal type. So they thought we should have half with uh, digits and half with uh, Latin glyphs, or through with uh, a, a digits and through with Latin characters for the efficiency of typesetting, hand typesetting. But today, it is meaningless. And also, as you can see, uh, such half is uh, or full uh, is derived from uh, proportional uh, original proportional Latin glyphs uh, look ugly here. So I think it should be recommended to use proportional Latin and the number glyphs instead always. Unfortunately, it takes time to change an accepted convention in Japan. In this case all digits and Latin glyphs are proportional and uh, with, uh, with spaces uh, before and after each uh, proportional grip. I think this looks better, better than uh, this uh, sample uh, setting and half widths and full widths numbers and Latin glyphs. There's another uh, issue. For the distance between the Latin baseline and the bottom of the Japanese M body, 0.12 of the body size has been used traditionally for postscript-based post Japanese fonts. It means that the relative uh, position, relative distance between the, the bottom of the 
Japanese M body, type body, and that a Latin bass line is a preset to 0.12 of the body size in traditional postcode fonts. But imagine that the, the bounding box, uh, imagine the case where the bounding box of the uh, Japanese design is extremely small. This preset or pre uh, fixed at a position doesn't work because if the, zero point, if the relative position is of Latin baseline is uh, always 0 0.12 of the body size from the bottom of the, the Japanese body, uh, if the uh, Japanese uh, a type, size, type, type design uh, adopts a, a smaller uh, the bounding box size, alignment uh, a, a cannot be done. So I think one possible uh, solution might be to center the cap height within the M body. Uh, yes, I think this is the best possible solution, but we have not yet reached a conclusion about this because some values in the OS2 table and the base table uh, might be affected and changing the traditional baseline position can entail compatibility problems. Based on what uh, we, what I mentioned so far, I think we can say that uh, the we can say the following conditions can apply. From procedural or very practical viewpoints. The following points can be said. First, you need to find or define abstract concepts applicable to both designs, both scripts. You need to design grips for each script, each script according to script-dependent principles and their aesthetics. Don't try to simply uh, uh, make shapes of the secondary script, imitate those of the primary script. It is a bad idea. Finally, you will be able to adjust the generic properties, optical properties, such as stroke weight, size, counter spaces, width, and position between the scripts. So I think harmony between East Asian and Latin scripts is possible if we understand that the two categories of designs are completely different things. Typographers have been trying to harmonize various things for centuries. The West can meet the East and the East can meet the West. And the West can understand the East, and the East can understand the West. Because both sides are coexisting always and simultaneously. I want to, uh, personally, I want to believe uh, that uh, this has been unchanged since the age of the Roman Empire or the Han Dynasty in China. Thank you very much.